back to the channel, everybody. In this video, we are going to lay out and frame stairs. Just by way of reference, our stairs are like 99% of the time carpeted. Very rarely will we get tile or hardwood. If we did, I would show you just a few changes. But since it's stairs, this just is a nice basic, well, basically, it's a stair building basics. And I'll show you some production techniques as we go. For more information, I have in-depth videos that really slow down the process. So I'm gonna go ahead and link to those right here. It doesn't matter to me whether I'm building off of a slab or off of a framed floor, I am always going to start with control lines. And so for that, I'm gonna always use a laser. This little Stabila LAX 600G is new. I'm really digging this laser. I can see the beams even in the broad daylight, as you can see here. I wanna start with this platform nice and level. Now, having said all of that, our flat work guy is just nailing it with these slabs. But even so, I'm always gonna show, you saw in the previous videos, all of our walls got shot with lasers. I'm gonna do the same thing with the platform. Let me show you that in a little more detail. Because this one actually was extremely easy. Hey, top of the morning to you guys. So I've got to frame some stairs and I always start from a level landing. So I have my Roseburg rigid lamb that goes across. My hangers are already pre-installed. Now, I would normally set up the laser and use it as a control point. I need to measure down 51516. That's the top of my landing. So I put the laser right here on top of my nice six foot ladder, by the way, very visible. Well, it turns out that <laughs> this never happens, right? The uh, ladder is the exact height of my platform, so I don't need to do any kind of adjusting. I'm just gonna snap lines all the way around and then I can aim my framing for that. Giddy up, so that makes a nice easy start to the day. Hey, have a great week, everybody. So like I mentioned, normally you would just have your reference point measure down on one end, whatever the difference is, you'd measure everywhere. But hey, every once in a while, things just work out and make your life super, super easy. Now, what I do is I snap lines all the way around because then I can put blocking in as needed. So wherever my landing stops, it's almost always in between stud bays. So that's why I go ahead and I put in flat two by 12 blocks. We always have two by 12 scrap from our stair stringers, et cetera. So that's why I go with that. That's the way I was taught to do it like, I don't know, 25 years ago. Well, I was taught well. You've probably figured out by now that this is a split entry house. I need to frame this pony wall across the front we got all the other exterior interior walls framed. We got all of it braced, plumb and lined. You can even see the beams in the background are set. As I mentioned, we've got the LVL that goes across not only the one wall, but across the opening. So when you come up the stairs, that's what's gonna support the floor. Now that we have all of those heights adjusted, I wanted to build this front pony wall to the top of my platform so that my floor sheathing for that platform can come in and connect to it. Could have just as easily framed it low and ran your two by six or whatever your fr uh, platform framing is, in my case two by 12. We could have ran that right over the top. I just happen to think that this is just a little easier or stronger or neither. I don't know, I just like it better. Can't really articulate why. Isn't that just true of so many of our preferences in life? Anyway, you notice that our framing though is advanced, so-called advanced framing. I'd really like to come up with a better name than that. There's nothing advanced about it but it is 24 inches on center. I'm always checking everything for plumb, so that's why I've got my six foot Stabila R-beam level that is nine years old. Okay, so as I mentioned, our platform is also, well, maybe I didn't mention that, but anyway, our platform is going to be two by 12. And the reason why we do this, we had an inspector many years ago. I think he's actually retired now. Bull Jerry asked me, why do you use two by 12? Oh, real quick, notice the gap on the left. That two by 12 was not cut to the number I gave and I don't care because it's about a 3 16 gap, maybe a quarter of an inch. It's not gonna change anything structurally because we're gonna build a wall under that. This is just gives you a little insight into my personality, go with it. Anyway, Jerry once asked me, why are we framing two by 12 stair platforms? And the reason was, this was the way I was taught, is because the platform gets so much traffic coming in and out of the house, in this case, coming out of the garage and going upstairs, you're moving furniture, you're moving groceries, the kids are running up and down. We want that platform to be super stiff. Honestly, two by eights would be plenty for the span. Maybe two by six would start to feel a little bouncy, but that's the reason why. 
So this is one of those areas where it is a little bit more expensive, but we feel like it's worth it because over a long period of time, you're just gonna maintain that stiffness. I just got done mentioning that we're framing 24 on centers. For that same reason of stiffness, I'm making that stair landing 16 on center. And then I've got it supported I'm right there in the middle with a two by four under it that breaks that so span. And then I also on add on end. a longer two by four because that's so going that to be means... part of our temp guardrail oh, yeah, these are pretty... until we actually frame the half so wall. So that means this will be your standard left to right. Um, measure left to right, seven foot and cut it. Okay. Let me grab the pass load. The upper set of stairs on this house, I think was two rise or three rise less than the lower. Part of that was because we raised the wall height. Notice on the upper left, we've got that big glue lamb header. We wanted an eight foot door, the plan showed seven, so we raised the walls to match that. That being said, I'm extending the platform on the right to catch the heel of the upper stairs. Now this is just for me, I find much quicker to frame this way. And just to prove to you how strong it is, Watch. Do you have any five inch screws? I have, yes, a bunch. Okay. What I'm going to do. You know that basically these screws make an appearance in every Awesome Framers video. <laughs> these are the Strong Tie five inch SDWS timber screws. These bad boys are big, they're made for deck ledgers. So by adding just a couple of these, notice how it stiffens up this little scab on. But, I do a pull up. Oh, you know, I don't know that I can anymore. I was like, oh, you got up there though. Uh, maybe I could do a pull up, but not necessarily a chin up. Or no, I could do a chin up, but not yeah. a pull up. Chin up these biceps. Those are nice. Nice. With the weighted belt. Yeah, yes, thank you. That makes me feel a whole lot better about being weak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got a strong back. Yeah, I got strong back. You know, my, my glutes are really... Okay, so this gun... <laughs> my glutes are really my uh, claim to fame. It's your calves. Everybody talks about these sweet calves, dude, but it's the, it's the glutes. Yeah, that's what I might have you do, Mr. Noah... It's me. Mr. Noah... I'm gonna glue this and then I'm gonna stand out of the way. I'm not gonna glue the whole thing. That way I've got a place to walk. When you hand it to me. Which cut side, this side? Cut side. And which side do you want the groove? Okay, so grooves face the back of the house. Okay, that goes that way, okay. Yep, and then your cut side will be on the right. Okay. I'm just not gonna glue too far. I'm gonna drop a four foot line. What I'm gonna have you do is hold my uh, phone stationary. You better have parking. As I glue. Mm. Cause this stuff is so cool. I know, I love watching it. It's Let me do this real quick. Brian's calling us. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna get to all of these. Okay, now this last one. If you just hold it. Yeah. And then we're gonna let it reduce. Just don't be too close. And you might need to hit the focus button. Oh, it's focus. Awesome, that's fast. I'm gonna put this guy up here. I love this stuff.
Okay, that should be good. Now when you hand the sheet, yep, you're there. So just lean it right against the wall. Yep, just like that. Straight up to me. Oh. All right, can you push it any farther? I yeah. can't. My feet are slipping. Okay, and we're gonna go all the way to that wall. Okay. I stepped on the two by 12 and I started going backwards. Can you cut me now a piece that is 15 and three quarters? No. Please tell me that this battery, I just... So as you could see, that little scab on could easily hold my weight. It will definitely hold the weight of the stairs because they're all gonna be lagged into the walls on the sides. So really no weight is even gonna be on that little scab. So anyway, I'm using the Passload XP Nailer because every time I use glue, I end up with glue all over my hands, even if I don't have a hose. So this helps me to minimize that. It's basically, you look at it the same way I'm looking at it. So yeah, if you stand in the middle. In the pass load, I am using a galvanized eight penny nail and it's a ring shank nail. Because I have the dots on the panel, if I've given numbers from the correct side, then I can use the dots and markings on the panel to make sure that I'm not missing. If I, even if I do miss, it's not that big of a deal. I can hop underneath and pound those up, but we don't want shiners because over time they'll squeak. And likely this landing will actually be hardwood or tile. I don't remember which, I think hardwood. So the, the stairs themselves will be carpet. It's a lot safer to go up and down carpeted stairs. People don't slip. But the landing yeah, itself will probably be hardwood. Having said that, I'll bet you anything it ends up tile. <laughs> but it will not be carpet. Yeah, I like how all of my material is just super cupped. Okay, so I'm using 2x12 stringers, which I specified to be pretty. They did not come out pretty. The, the, so four of them total. The bottom two get screwed together with three inch screws. The top two then get legged in with five inch screws. The reason for that is so that I can only mark the top. And what I do is I measure the diagonal. So I calculate the whatever the riser is. I have a 10 inch run. When I enter that into the calculator and hit diagonal, then M plus and then recall M plus equal, 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 equal. Again, you can see that in another video. What that allows me to do is, is lay out the points, so to speak, where the rise meets the run. Then I just mark the rise and run with a pitch block. I don't use a square for any of this. We, I switched a long, long, long time ago. And I don't remember, no. Don't forget I to subtract for the thickness of your treads and also for the thickness of yeah. your risers. I know a guy that forgets that regularly. Um, he's slightly heavy <laughs> and he has a yellow level in his hand. Anyway, if you've ever built stairs, you have forgotten that at one point or another, I guarantee you. If you're like me, it's maybe a thousand times. Oh yeah. Yeah, we tried to be real picky and overall it was pretty good. Due to some camera issues, as in overheating, you'll notice that the stringers on the left are already made. Now I'm cutting the stringers for the upper set, and then we'll switch later and you'll see. Anyway, we'll get into that. So what I do is I cut fully all the way through using the Makita 10 and a quarter inch beam saw. I love this saw. 
That cuts through the top two completely and about halfway through stringer number three. I cut right up to where the rise meets the run. I don't overcut on stairs. I do it all day long on rafters. I don't do it on stairs. Again, just because of the traffic that they see. I'm gonna make all the cuts going one way, then I'm gonna reverse and come the other way. So let's assume that these are the rise, or the run, the, excuse me, let's assume these are the treads. I'm gonna cut them all first, switch direction, and then cut all the risers. My goal is to become a human radial arm saw and just go right in straight. You kind of notice, especially with that handle on, I can just kind of push the saw with my whole body and not my arms. Yeah, I just kind of, I don't know, maybe that looks kind of funny. But anyway, you get the point. Man, this stuff is just... I definitely do not blame the saw because I had the same issues with corded saws. You can see the cups. And so all that internal pressure just, you know, is just hard on the blade and hard yeah, on the motor. Time. We got some music. Yeah, I know. I've been jamming all day, but... <laughs> I can't work without music. I can't either. But I can hear it. And now we're gonna make all of these cuts coming back. It's uh, it's technically a little faster than switching directions. You know, rise then the run, then the rise then the run, or rise or tread, rise or tread. Does it really matter at the end of the day? Nope. I just find that for me, I'd rather stay in that rhythm of cutting all of the tread lines and then all of the riser lines. Now, because I have all of these, these four stringers fastened together, remember the two three inch at the bottom and then I go through all of them with the five inch, that means that all of those lines are perfectly going to match. So now I can pull out the five inch and I can push the top two stringers off. The bottom two are still attached. So what I can do, and, and honestly what I could have done was add a couple three inch and then taken out the five inch, but it really doesn't matter. And okay. I'll explain why in just a minute. What I want to do is then make the same cuts with the beam saw right up to the lines through the bottom two. Remember, see how they're fastened? They haven't moved. Now I'm just gonna go right through those same cuts. I don't have to mark anything. I'm gonna make all of these cuts and then you will see the magic. Gosh, you know, these things are so cupped that it's like everything's binding. I'll make sure. <laughs> I'm sorry to cut that. No, you can leave that. It's just like I've been fighting it the whole time. That's my brother. He's the smart one. He, uh, and I'm just the old one. You can hear it. Such is life, such is life. So I'm leaving the base plate loose so I can kind of plunge in. I can see those marks. Go right up to the line again. And here is the magic. I cannot say enough good things about this little Milwaukee jigsaw. I have a Diablo blade in it. It cuts nice and straight, but it's super powerful. Like it, it, I'm just finishing the cuts, right? 
bringing it right up to where the riser meets the tread. But it's just, I don't know. For, the, for any of you who've used jigsaws, you know how easy it is to you know, get out of square, especially as you get thicker and thicker material. This thing just keeps it nice and square. I bought it locally like a year ago, and I was like, why in the world was I still using that old Bosch jigsaw? It was 20 years old. Live and learn. It's totally worth it. So basically what I do is I stack four stringers. I only mark the top, cut through all of them with the beam saw, take the top two off, cut through the bottom two again with the beam saw, just right up to the riser tread line. Then I go through and I finish that with the jigsaw. Normally I would still have those two on the left fastened together, but I was having some issues with cracking stringers. And so I elected to do them one by one. There is some repair work in that, which I'm not showing in this video. Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there. Yep, those screws are not cheap, but I don't care, because I'm just gonna reuse them over and over again. And through the magic of editing, we are now fast forwarded. We time traveled back for that section, and now we went back to the future for this section. Okay, so typically I would use one by four on the side of my stringers, and that way there's plenty of room for the drywall to slip down. I'm using two by four so that there's the option to run skirt board or drywall, even though I know it's gonna be drywall. I mark them in place, there's no measuring, there's no angles, just scribe them to the stringer. I nail them off with framing nails. Then eventually when we go and we, um, when we attach the stringers, we're gonna use those five inch screws through the stringer, through the two by four, into the studs. And that's why I say the staircase really is held up by all of those, yeah, yeah. you know, so-called lags, but those ledger screws, it just lags is a maybe easy to understand word. And so really nothing in the middle of the stairs is actually bearing on the stair platform. My preference is to rip down Advantech into my stair treads. This DeWalt saw is a beast at ripping. It is the only thing I like using the saw for. So we have permanently left that Cirque Saw Technologies, I think it is. I'll put a link in the description. This ripping guide is awesome. This is the old one. The new one is even better. It allows you to make even bigger rips. I just set it to 11 and a quarter because my treads are 10 inches. I want an inch and a quarter overhang. So 11 and a quarter. I set the saw to that, tighten everything down. And well, you can see this is real time, just how quickly we can get through those cuts. Another advantage of using Advantech, it's a lot more stable in our wet weather than our old OSB bullnose treads. The other advantage is I can just throw a few extra sheets on the um, lumber list. And then my stair treads, my stair landing, and my floor are all, all going to perform the same because they're the same material. You definitely don't have to do it this way. For me, I just find it to be pretty productive. I would love to avoid ripping them, but it takes like two minutes, just no time at all. Stack them, use the beam saw to cut multiples. I think I'm cutting four there at a time. They're marked to length. Again, so a big way that we speed up the process is we just use bigger saws for a lot of this stuff. We use the impactor to hold them together. We use the jigsaw. I used to use a handsaw. I've tried using a reciprocating saw. You're just more likely to break things that way. The jigsaw is more gentle. Now this piece is the scrap from the stair platform. So I just need a couple more rips. So I can just go through and rip everything into my 11 and a quarters, and then I can come back and then cut them to the actual length of the treads.
It was a pretty fragmented couple of days. So I was building the stairs the day before this. Then we had to go over and set all the under slab foam because we had um, the basement slabs from the 125. I don't even remember what I called them. Anyway, I've got a whole playlist here on the foundations there. But while the guys finished that, then I came back over to finish the stairs. So this is really over parts of two days. Typically a stairway like this takes me less than four hours. It takes longer if you are filming it, but much less when you are not. Okay. Right there. <laughs> I'm just making sure I'm loaded up with three inch framing nails. They're a three inch 0.131 diameter, so they're not going to split the Doug fur. And then it's a, I don't know, two and three sixteenths, two and three eighths, two and a half. I don't remember what the eights are, but a galvanized ring shank for the treads. You will notice that I'm using two by eights as my risers. Again, significant overkill, but I want stairs that don't ever squeak. And when I fasten the treads down into two by eight, I have a whole lot more than nailing them or not nailing them into like OSB risers or even one by eight, which is what we used for many, many years. The problem we found is that over time, sometimes one by eights will crack where the nails went into them. So we switched a long time ago to two by eights. The other advantage to two by eights besides being able to nail into them without them cracking or breaking is that because a lot of times we're running up and down the stairs, we're really right on the riser itself. So I've tried to make sure that I have a stringer under the walk line, which typically is 12 to 15 inches from the wall to the to your belt buckle. And then with the two by eight, people can run up and down on the nose all they want. Nothing's going to break or deflect. So these are not a cheap stair by the time I get done. And oh, I should notice, see that how that riser was a little short? That would help. Yep, I don't care because I know I have plenty of room between it and the wall. Yeah, I know, some people are, you're gonna be triggered. You're gonna be triggered, I know you are. I'll try to be a little more careful on the others. Then I have blocks between the stringers that have been screwed down to the platform. I'm gonna nail the riser into that as well. Hey, look, that one looks a little bit better, right? Normally what I do is I cut the risers a quarter of an inch less. Oh man, that one's long. That was dumb of me. You guys are gonna think I'm a total hack. I know that because when I posted this on Instagram, that's what people said. Okay, that one looks a little bit better. Now I typically will cut them like a quarter of an inch short so that I have an eighth on each side to play with. So if I make one side super smooth, the other side will have a quarter, it will be a quarter short. Who cares? The big thing is, if your stairs squeak, you're a hack, even if everything was flush, right? I mean, that's what people will think, the people who live in the home. Some of us kind of like squeaky stairs. Um, but teenage kids don't because then they can't sneak in and out. This is all real time. You can see how quick this process goes. If we've done our cutting well, if we've done our assembly well and we did the math right, then the rest of this is pretty gravy. It's just pretty easy. And again, I just like the Passload XP nailer for work like this because there's no hose. It's gonna be easy to clean up and roll up. Also, I'm not getting any glue across my hands or a hose. We have like a 20, 25 year old Senko hose that has just all kinds of glue still on it, dragging it through the old polyurethane glue. I did end up with glue all over my hands on this one. I can't figure out how, but it kind of stains your hands for a couple of days. That's life. Besides, you want everybody to know you've been working, right? So you, you better have something on your hands. This is a step that I don't think is necessary anymore, but I still do it. I am gluing the back of the risers so that I can push them tight to the treads. Squeaks really are primarily caused by nails that split out or shine, you know, they miss. And then as the material moves up and down, that's where you get the squeak. I have not found that the riser material and the tread material touching causes any squeaks because it's all really way, way stronger than it needs to be. Having said that, it only takes a second to glue them. So I go ahead and I glue them. But I don't fasten through the back. And the reason is, is because you can't really fasten into OSB treads without just blowing them out. I used to go through the back when we used the old inch and an eighth bull nose. I had more to aim for and we would do that by hand. Just use smaller eight penny Galvi nails. I just think that's a wasted step now. I've stopped doing that quite some time ago and our stairs are not squeaking.
turn the valve off when you're not going to use these glue guns. Uh, that, uh, well, you can see, in fact, you saw in the previous video when I showed how to clean them, those glue, that particular glue gun has a bent nozzle and it still works great because turn the nozzle off, make sure you clean it. All right, there's some nice product placement, flat out best. Yep, it really is. Advantech is a great subfloor. I am going kind of slow because I want to make sure that those nails go through the tread into the stringer without blowing sideways. I just don't want that. So I'm actually, when I'm done, I'm going to go underneath and just double check that. Two nails through the tread into each of the cut portions of your stringer. And then it's just lather, rinse, repeat. Last step, no pun intended, actually it was totally intended, is I want to nail that tread down into the riser, like eight inches, 12 inches, six inches, I don't know, whatever you think, but I'm making sure that I aim, and my eye is good enough for this, because it's an inch and a half, right? It's kind of hard to miss at that point, just take into account that overhang. I'm nailing the tread down into those risers, and that way it's nice and clamped while the glue sets up. Again, that's the spot where people will be running up and down, so there it is. Thank you everybody for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe button and we will see you in the next video.